Hey everyone, my name is Kevin Chaitis and yes, I shaved my beard. So back in Halloween I tried to dress up as Kyle Ren and well, enough about that. As you can tell by the title of this video, I'll be showing my Dia de Muertos photoshoot that I did this year. So every year since 2018, aka my freshman year, I've been trying to take pictures of my friends to post in November, because the first and second day of this month we celebrate in Mexico the Dia de Muertos, and every year we try to make it as special and different as we can. So in 2018 the theme was timeless, in 2019 we experimented with neon paint and UV lights, a fun challenge! In 2020, everyone took their own pictures in their homes and the details were added digitally by myself. Now, in 2021 and fully vaccinated, most of us had been able to meet in person in our university, bringing color back to our lives, which gave me the idea for this Dia de Muertos theme. If you didn't know this already, we're Mexicans and we get so pumped up for this season, because we go from Halloween to this awesome celebration to the end of the year holidays. In my opinion, Dia de Muertos is one of the most beautiful traditions there are, and if you aren't quite so familiar with the whole concept, I suggest you watch this documentary about it, it's pretty accurate. So, without any further ado, I'll show you the process of how we made these beautiful pictures. Pre-production. So, a couple of months ago I had this idea of having a really colorful scene, and I love the way watercolors are so runny, so I tried to mix them up a little. And has been the case in the past years, my friend Anna, who is a complete pro in the world of makeup, helped me establish the look and feel of these images. And then, I procrastinated a lot because of homework, housework and work work. A week before the photoshoot, I had the idea to involve these clouds made by ink entering into the water so you know how to find a fishbowl. I tried to coordinate everyone's schedules and that proved to be one of the most challenging things to do. When I finally had a date established, for example, my university implemented a face mask at all times or expelled policy, which is a good thing. But quite threatening to the, you know, makeup in the face sort of concept, so I had to move the date in order to do the whole thing in my flat. Production. So over the course of roughly 8 hours we did the whole thing, on the roof, on an overcast day, two lights with umbrellas and a pop-up black background. A week after the main photoshoot, I took the pictures of the ink in the water using the fishbowl. I placed a topper on top to have a point of reference for focus, and using a syringe, I took some food coloring, a little bit of water, and this was the result. Obviously I had a long way to go, but that's part of our post-production. Let me guide you through my post-production process involving our final picture, featuring my friend Valdecita. Mind you, I'm not saying this is the right way to do any of these things, and if you happen to have a better way to do any of these steps, please let me know in the comments down below. After selecting with color which pictures I'm going to use, it's time to work on each one of them. Selecting this one, I'm overexposing quite a lot, so that the auto select tool in Photoshop finds the outline a little bit easier. Then again, this might be a placebo. Then, back in Lightroom, I turn down the exposure and open again in Photoshop. I drag the selection over to the new one and copy the layer mask. Then, I place a completely black background so I make sure everything is A OK and delete and close the ghost version. So, as you might see, not every white garment is 100% white, so it was time to fix it. I grabbed the white colors and adjust with a hue saturation layer and fix the mask a little. And then I retouch with my dodge and burn action and a 5% brush. This technique is really simple, so let me know if you want a tutorial or something on this. Then it's time to get the ink flowing. I bring up in Photoshop one of the already selected ink flows. These were selected with the red channel. Again, if you have a better method, please let me know. I grab it and move it to my image file. In this stage, I make a gradient picking up the colors of her makeup and then use the layer mask of the ink to manipulate it, and add a duplicate to work with the ink flowing in the foreground. After this point, I made a duplicate, so we have both the original and the posting version. The posting version is resized to 2160, so it's twice the size of a 1080 picture. 
I add a little bit of sharpening and in Lightroom I add this radial filter and break up her eyes to have a mysterious look. And that's about it, now it's time to look at the photos. Gotta say, I'm a really big fan. So thank you for your time, I really appreciate it. I'm looking forward for my winter school vacation so I can create more videos for you. In the meanwhile, I'll grab a copy of the YouTuber script. Um, like the video and smash the subscribe button with the bell icon. Don't forget to follow me on social media to keep up with everything I do. And until the next video, bye!